Hi there, this is Ray with Tarot Living. So today I actually wanted to talk a little bit about this book, which is Understanding Tarot Court by Mary Greer and Tom Little. And I also wanted to take a look at one of the exercises that they had suggested in their book, which I think is really valuable in terms of understanding the meaning of the various cards. So this particular exercise takes a look at the court cards, the minor arcana, the major, and the aces kind of separately and thinks about them in terms of what their meanings are in general. So the court cards would be the who in the deck and the minor arcana would be the what. The, the major arcana would be the why which would give you the underlying reason as to why something is happening or what kind of growth experience we're in at that moment. And the aces are the where. Now when I think about the aces, I actually think about um, the realm. So if you think about where, I would think about what realm it is in life. And if you're an astrologer, I actually um, and have worked as an astrologer as well. So if you're an astrologer, some one thing that you can take a look at is perhaps the 12 houses and take a look at the realm that those fall in in life. And so you'll see the water houses the earth, the fire, and the air, respectively. So you could take a look at the houses that those particular things land in if you're looking at the aces and you're wondering about the where, which would mean what realm it is in life. The who, I think, is pretty understandable and you know self-explanatory. So the who are the court cards. And the what is going to be the minor arcana, which would basically mean what are the activities that are happening in everyday life. And the why, as we talked about, would be the ma major arcana. And that would give you the underlying reason, um, understanding, you know, motivation, the deeper purpose, the deeper learning that needs to happen. Okay, so I've gone ahead and shuffled the cards as you know, and I went ahead and just um, saved a little bit of time and did the separating. So these are the court cards, as the suggestion is in the book, and the minor arcana, which are the what, and the who, which are the major arcana, and then the where, which are the aces. And this is the Druid Craft uh, deck, by the way. Absolutely gorgeous deck, as you've seen, I've cut them down, um, I've cut the borders off, but um, one of the most beautiful decks I've ever seen, to be honest with you. So, um, so I've got them upside down in order, uh, you know, so that I don't see what I am picking, of course. So I'm going to pick a who, which is a character, and that is the Queen of Cups. And then I'm going to pick a what? Ten of Cups. I'm going to pick, pick a why? The Moon. And then I'm going to pick a where, and that's going to be pentacles, which is in the area of Earth. Um, so, which would be in the second, sixth, and tenth houses. So, what I would probably say first about this is that if we're looking at this, we see that we've got two cups and we have one pentacle. And we know right away that cups and pentacles are both feminine elements and they also work quite well together. So um, that's good to know. So this kind of flows extremely well. Now the queen, um, the queen is, is really a character who has a lot of mastery over the particular element or suit that she's in. So in this case it's in cups. But the queen would have mastery over it in a little bit of a different way than the king. So the king is considered to have mastery and would probably be very externalized in his um, approach to um, expressing that mastery. So you would see delegation and direction and kind of very externalized authority. Whereas the queen is more, she more has inner authority and a mastery over it in an internalized way. So she really sits within the element or the suit in fullness and sits in it very well, but doesn't necessarily externalize as much. And if she does externalize, it tends to be uh, things along the lines of um, nurturing and kindness and caring along with being a leader. So the Queen of Cups is somebody who definitely leads with, with kindness and love and will be 
excellent in leading within relationships. So that would be one of the key points, I would say, is that relationship is going to be important to this individual. And also emotions. The whole area of emotions is um, at the forefront for the Queen of Cups. So she has the ability to be a leader, but also be very in touch with her emotional self. Um, she may have a lot of feelings, though, that are coming and going, and your entire emotional life, when you've got cups, a lot of cups in the deck, will be, you know, go with how emotions go, which is the ebb and flow of those emotions. And the what, so that's the, the who. The what in this particular case is the Ten of Cups. So Ten of Cups, we know, is going to be related again to relationships and emotions, and it really is all about the completion and fulfillment and happiness of feeling very fulfilled with family and having a happy life and um, positivity that you've created around yourself in terms of the people and your relationships that you've built. And 10 is you know, the number of completion. So it means that this person is really actualized in the what, which is um, the area of emotions and home and family life. And then we have the moon, which is the why. So that's the major arcana. So if we're looking at the moon in relation to these other cards, it's kind of interesting because they all have a very, um, you know, the two cups and the moon have a very similar sort of energy to them. Now the moon, however, is it has more hidden elements to it and things that aren't on, on the conscious level necessarily. So what I would probably say about this is that this person is fairly emotionally based and that certainly there could be a lot of emotions or currents underneath the surface. Um, the person may be aware of some, uh, may be aware of many, but, are, but is not expressing them. So there could be some things that are hidden underneath the surface. Um, this person would also be extremely imaginative uh, and creative. The moon would also add an element of imagination and creativity beyond even what the cups would uh, provide. However, the individual would want to make sure that they're very uh, clear and they're not being deceived in any way by their own emotion or even the way that they're seeing other people. Um, or the way they're feeling about a certain situation. So I think clarity would you know, maybe be a challenge for this person or they would have to really work at making sure that they have a clear understanding of their own feelings of something and how they may feel about somebody else or how their relationships are going, for example. Um, but a lot of imagination, a lot of creativity, uh, again, seen with the moon. Certainly the intuition and the, even the... Um, psychic element to the moon in combination with the cups would make this person just very sensitive to, you know, having a sixth sense and being able to really connect um, with spirit and, you know, having information coming to them, I would imagine, uh, fairly easily. Now, the uh, the, the where, which is the realm we're going to look at, is the Ace of Pentacles. Now, the Ace of Pentacles brings in a little bit of a different element, and it's actually a welcome element, in my opinion, because this really draws everything down and grounds everything, because we've got a lot of cups, and, you know, the moon, uh, you know, isn't the most grounded card and can sometimes see things not that clearly. And so the Ace of Pentacles in the realm of the Earth, realm and the second, sixth, and tenth house realm is going to be, I think, a welcome addition. So the pentacle, the ace of pentacles, really it's going to bring in the element of what does this person manifest in the physical realm? Where can this person see these things actually playing out? So I would think the first place is that you would probably see this person potentially working in a field that deals with emotional element or a nurturing element. So you may see this person as, you know, a therapist. You may see the person working as actually a, an, an intuitive or a psychic. You may see this person working as a nanny, someone who's caretaking. You may see um, even nurses, I would imagine. So, and then I think because this pentacle can be in the sixth house, which is the house of your physical body, and pentacles can mean that in general, 
um, I would say that this person would be excellent in the healing field of any kind. So, you know, Reiki or anything where you're bringing intuitive energy and you're, you're grounding it. So those would be kind of the realm or the area. So career, 2, 6, and 10 deal with work, money, career, um, and your physical body. So I think that's the where is the welcome thing to have the pentacle sitting there. So very intuitive person, very nurturing person. Um, you want to make sure that you're not, you know, deceiving, you know, or feeling uh, that you're not seeing things clearly. You want to make sure that you clarify your opinion on things and your uh, viewpoint on things and also the ability to bring that creativity, imagination, and intuition into a physical realm. So those are some of the thoughts that I have uh, with regard to this particular reading. Um, you know, I'm certainly, I'm, I'm sure that there are many other ideas in terms of you know, the way you could read that, and you could certainly pick any other four cards and you could read them another way. This is just an exercise in order to really pick up on your keywords and understand that this is the who, this is the what that they're doing, this is the why, the underlying um, motivation and reasons, and this is the realm that we're dealing with. So I think it's a really valuable exercise, and again, you can find that in Understanding the Tarot Court by Mary Greer and Tom Little. So I hope you've enjoyed that, and thanks for watching Tarot Living.